over these last couple of months, we have all experienced virtual presentations, some better than others. I've had my fair share of looking up people's noses and seeing ceiling fans in the background and seeing people look like they're in the shadows in their video. I've had my fair share of bad audio experiences from not being able to hear the person to just poor audio quality in general because we're all experiencing these Zoom meetings, these WebEx meetings, these Adobe Connect meetings, these Skype meetings, and everything has been virtual. So we've kind of been thrust into this. And today, we are going to share with you some of the best practices on how to present virtually the same information. We've got a lot of fun, and I'm really excited, maybe feeling a little bit old when I say this, but we're going to be bringing to you today over 60 years of experience in presenting, facilitating, and communicating. My name is Kevin Karstick, and I am joined by Mr. Bill Krieger, who also has over 30 years of experience, and I'm going to have Bill introduce himself now. Thank you, Kevin. Yes, I, I'm Bill Krieger, and yeah, I, I've been with I Speak now for, gee, Kevin, like 10 years. Uh, you and I have been working together. In fact, just uh, last year, they told me that with I Speak, over 5,000 students uh, through uh, my training, which is pretty exciting. Certainly have been uh, around the world with training and, and with a lot of different cultures and languages and so forth. Been in leadership uh, since my youth. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you, though, group, what really, really describes me is just the excitement I get and certainly the fulfillment I receive when I'm helping others succeed and become better. Uh, don't you agree, Kevin? Absolutely. I mean, that is the goal. Let's make a difference in people's lives, how they communicate, how they present, how they structure, how they organize their message. And we are all about that. And we want to say special Boy, welcome, we, Bill, all these great, yeah, I, great things that we've got joining yeah. us. I was chatting earlier about how many people I recognize in our list from people that have been to our classes. And so I'm just going to do a quick shout out to a couple of people. Shannon, so good to see you again, or at least see your name on the list here. And Trish and Tracy and Mike and Paul and Logan and Liz. So anyway, there's so many of you guys. We've got over 150 people that registered for this. Super, super exciting. And we are going to interact, Bill, aren't we? This is, this is not going to be just you and me talking, is it? Yeah, and I'm always impressed with just how far reaching I speak is and all of our friends. And, you know, that slide, Kevin, didn't even begin to show all the companies that we interface with. Uh, it's uh, it's pretty exciting. And yes, so here we are, Kevin and I, uh, doing a webinar. And we, we don't want this just to be about us. We certainly want to hear from each of you. And we're going to invite you to ask us questions, certainly make some comments, give us feedback along the way. Kevin and I will be watching that chat window. And so that's where we'd like you to be as you want to make those, certainly those comments and add those. So we're going to use that chat window, which the arrow is pointing to now. Many of you have been doing it, telling us of some of the issues you have, uh, and then you're getting them fixed. That's always great. Boy, the technology, we love it, and we hate it. It's an interesting relationship, isn't it? So yeah, use the chat window. Once you type it in the little box, don't forget to send it. Yes. Uh, and it'll post, and we'll do our best to follow along and read those as we go along. In fact, let's Let's have some fun with it uh, right now just to see uh, and get some feedback from you and to get you engaged with us. I've got a fun question for you here, uh, which is, let's see if I can get to it here real quick. Ah, there we are. Where are you from, right? And, you know, Kevin, when my wife and I, we've been married now 40 years, but then that first year or two, she'd always tell me that I'm from Mars and she's from Venus. Uh, now, after 40 years together, she's usually not really caring where I'm from, but pretty good at telling me where she wants me to go. <laughs> so uh, now, here we are now in San Antonio. Uh, Kevin, where are you located? I never know where I you're at. I am in Georgetown, Texas, and you just got me cracking up, Bill. And um, 
<laughs> it's all true, buddy. It's all true. Look, look at this list. We've got people from all around. This is really awesome. We've got people up in St. Paul, Dallas, um, Mars, Jason from Mars. He's also joining you, Bill. I don't know if you know Jason from Mars. We've got Plymouth with Scott Kelly. Good to see you. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think we were neighbors there for a while. <laughs> good to see you, too, uh, from Plymouth. Um, you know, I bet it's chilly up there. We're down in Texas, a little bit warmer there. We've got Maryland, Atlanta, Lubbock, Jersey. Uh, Kansas, a bunch of places. Uh, London, Steph from London, UK. Awesome. It's uh, what? 7 p.m. for you there, isn't it? Um, Kansas City, sunny California. Awesome. So glad that you guys are here. We have a packed hour with you guys. And here's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be talking about bad virtuals. And you guys are going to be on deck here in just a second because I'm going to be asking you a question. What are some of those bad things that you've been experiencing with virtual presentations? Basically, what are some of those mistakes that you've been seeing? That's going to be up here in just a second. Then we're going to talk about video. How do you use your video? I was opening today talking about the fact that we have seen so many crazy things with video. I've seen a lot on YouTube, things we ain't going to talk about today. Audio issues that people run into. So we're going to talk about audio. How to use your voice to really bring your message to life when you're presenting virtually. We're going to talk about knowing your message. That's been another one where people bounce all over the place. There's no continuity through their message. There's no flow, no structure. And we're going to talk about that, how to design clear slides when you deliver virtually. This also applies for in person. And then we're going to talk and spend a lot of time talking about that technology, all of those things, all of the tools, all the techniques that we can do to make sure that we've created this interactive session. Yeah, so jump in here into the chat window group and share with us some of those things that you have seen that just have driven you nuts, right, when it comes to using the virtual training. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah lagging video. Uh, and, boy, we're all frustrated with that. And, and, of course, now that everybody's working from home, those networks are strained. Uh, for sure. Uh, not muting, Renee. That's uh, thank you. Yes. The next thing you know, we're hearing conversations and noises we really don't it, care to hear. Their phone, and then they have good music playing, and it really becomes a distraction, doesn't it, Bill? Oh, I, what are you saying? I, I, what'd you do? Did you leave us? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. And the sounds that that Webex makes, Kelly. Yeah, you know, every time somebody comes in, we're going to get a chime. All right, so it's it's like, you know, hey, the most important thing I want you to know today is bing, 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 and what did you say? Yeah, yeah good. Uh, yeah, someone not knowing the technology platform, Megan. We're going to be talking about some of that today. Kevin's going to walk us through some cool things, show us some things that we can do within the platform. We've got some great things that are happening there in the chat there. I mean, the backlighting talking over others, all the technical difficulties. Brad said toilets flushing, um, all of the things that we see. So let's jump right in and let's start talking about video then, Bill. Let's talk about the video and, and we'll talk about the different things that we can do with the video. And we'll start with this. I think in so many of the meetings that I've been a part of, I don't see everybody turning their video on. And especially now over the last two months, we're working at home. How do I create that same feel at home, as we would in the office if I were in person or sitting around the table, part of it's turning your video on. So first one, it's yeah. basic, but it's turn the video on. What else? So right. Well, it certainly gives someone to something to look at, right? That's the, the fun thing about turning on the video, because the slides we have are very static. And, you know, we, get, we give them three seconds, and then we're moving on attention-wise. So it's nice to be able to see the face and hear the voice. Uh, well, along with the with the with the video, and then you get into the camera position when people aren't framed. And Bill, you've got a great example there. I, leave your video on for a second so everybody can see. You've got your video well framed, meaning that you're looking at the camera. It's great eye contact. And so we talk about that. I want to hear your thoughts on this. I want to hear your thoughts on lighting. And I'm going to share my thoughts on just the attire. I mean, how many times have we seen people not dressed appropriately for their webcast? 
And, and so they're super casual. I mean, have you ever seen people wearing like a hat and a t-shirt? Now, I mean, I am promoting the I Speak brand, um, but maybe this is a little bit too casual um, for a webcast. And, and so thinking about even our attire can be something that we want to keep in mind. So Bill, what are your, some of your thoughts on this? Yeah, there is uh, no doubt attire is good. And of course, maybe this is the, the fun part, right, about uh, working from home is that, you know, we can be a little more casual. Uh, and and certainly, uh, you know, I, I, I basically need to be dressed nice from the waist up, right? <laughs> and just, I got to have a nice shirt on. I got to look good from here. But we do want to give our best self. And for now, for some of your teammates, this might be the first time uh, they're seeing you in a home setting. So you want to be very much aware of all this lighting, camera position. What are they seeing? Uh, great quick change, by the way, that you must have jumped into that nearby phone booth, right? <laughs> Come out with the big, the big S on your chest, buddy. Uh, so yes, uh, uh, you know, uh, so yes, uh, uh, you know, a tire spawn. Just remember that if you're wearing shorts or whatever, and we've seen this, haven't we, Kevin, where someone has stood up and left their camera on and we're all going, uh, okay, that just lightened the load of this meeting. Hey, Kevin, it sounds like you're muted again, buddy. You're trying to give us that lesson one more time that you have to unmute your microphone. Yes. <laughs> when you were talking, so I didn't talk over you and didn't have any background distractions. But I was talking about the, the, the angle, the camera angle, and, and thinking about how this doesn't work and how often we're seeing this in presentations, how often we're seeing people who look like they're sitting in the dark when they're presenting, and I'm gonna kind of move my camera again to where I'm in front of a window. I mean, look how dark it is now. It looks like I'm in the shadows. And so one of the things that we wanna think about doing is making sure that we have all the appropriate lighting around. Now, one of the things that I do, I've got an overhead light, but I've also, I'm about to turn it on, I've got a desk light that just shines enough light to where we can see. It also makes me look super tan, doesn't it? Um, I'm not nearly this tan. But uh, that light, and, and it's also, it doubles as a sun tanning light so that I'm actually tanning myself while I'm here in my home office. But the, I'm kidding. The light is giving me that balanced lighting for us. So we want to think about eye contact, bringing that camera up, maybe thinking about purchasing an external camera, but really thinking about the frame of the video so that we're not looking down into the laptop and that we've got a good frame. So those are some of my starting places. What else on this list for you, Bill, are any tips or tricks that you've got for the audience? Yeah, and that's going to deal with, because I know a lot of times when we're communicating, uh, we want to use body language. We want to use our hands. Uh, I mean, this is part of the dynamic of turning on the video in the first place, is that it's, uh, it's not static. So we can see you, the face ex expressions, and so forth. So when it comes to movement, we want to be very, very careful here and know that any movement I do that is certainly not in a line with what I want to share with you, then it, it becomes really a, a distraction, a disengagement tool. Now you're wondering, uh, Bill, sitting in a swivel chair, what's wrong? Will you just calm down? Uh, we also want to use hands and gestures, but the struggle can be on a virtual setting and that we typically have our hands out in front of us, which puts them closer to the camera. Now all of a sudden, I've got hands that look like they came off the Hulk from a Marvel movie. Uh, in this case, move them closer to you. So if you want to use your hands, make those elbows bent all the way and keep them very, very close to your body. And now we can make gestures and they're fine. Also, don't make them too quick because if you start moving them really fast, all it is is a blur. Let the face tell a lot of the story. Some of that is the angle of the camera, going back to that, where my angle is down a little bit to where you can see some of those hand gestures. If I'm sitting too close to the camera like this, 
then all of a sudden you're losing out on all of that. So backing up just far enough from the camera, enough to where we've got your head, we've got maybe the upper body, now that people can see the hand gestures. Also looking at this list, so we've talked about lighting, we've talked about our attire, making sure that we're dressed appropriately for the situation. The backgrounds, let's talk about the backgrounds. What's behind you? I have seen into people's kitchens. I have seen into people's bedrooms as we've been doing these virtual presentations over these last two months because people don't have home offices. And so really thinking about what that backdrop is going to look like when you're presenting. Movements, Bill's been talking a little bit about that. I like to put my feet grounded on the floor so that I'm not finding myself swiveling in my chair, which I definitely have seen over the last few months, and people who tend to come back and forward with their body language, all of these things become distractions. So all the things that we wanna be looking out for when we are presenting virtually. We also wanna be careful of our audio. And you guys, I just saw in the chat, we're saying Bill's much louder than me. And I'm trying to talk as loud as I can. <laughs> but we can adjust the audio within the platforms that we're using, whether that's Zoom, whether that's WebEx, Skype, or here in Adobe Connect, we can adjust our microphone settings. And so I turned mine up a little bit. Bill is going to turn his down a little bit. We'll see if that helps. But there's a lot of things that we want to be thinking about when we're presenting virtually. We want to use our body language. We talked about video. But we also need to be able to use our voice. And Bill and I, Bill and I, we've both seen our share of people with low energy and people who come across monotone. Bill, what are some of those things that you've seen when we're teaching people or we're part of these virtual presentations? You know, it's it's interesting you asked me that because just yesterday. I was uh, calling in to get to some customer service on my automobile and the gentleman who answered the phone, and I won't give you his name, but it just cracked me up. Uh, this, is, uh, this is what I heard. Now I'm gonna turn my, my uh, video off so that you just hear the voice. And it was like, yeah, this is uh, JT, um, how can I help you? Uh, I can tell you at that point, I wasn't sure. I even wanted to keep the conversation going. <laughs> yeah, and, and so we have to have uh, the energy high. And group, when you're doing a virtual presentation, you're going to find it to be more energy taxing than if you were in face-to-face -face, uh, scenario. And, and so we want the energy up. Now there is a little caveat with that, and that is that we don't want the energy to be this high all the time because that can be taxing also. And none of us want that monotone voice, right? And I call it, Kevin, I don't know what you refer to it as, but I refer to it as the GPS voice. <laughs> you know, it's, like, it's that voice that just goes, turn right in 500 feet. I mean, th this person isn't, a, isn't even concerned on my GPS that I'm late for a meeting or I'm trying to get uh, to the hospital. I, I mean, it's just so boring. And, and you know that if the audience is not hearing that energy or the excitement in, their, in the voice, that it actually can cause them to feel tired. That's the reaction that we can have. And then we just disengage and pretty soon we're wishing we're anywhere. Let's not give them, let's not give them a reason to disengage from us. Yeah, and, and I don't know how many Great point about that. <laughs> yeah. Kevin, you got one of the best hundred thousand dollar smiles on the web here. So come in, talk to us about a smile. Peggy absolutely read our mind in terms of where we were going next because you can absolutely hear a smile in people's voices. So whether you're using video or not, having that smile on your face, Peggy, can make a huge difference. Research says that. And so we wanna be thinking about bringing that smile to our virtual presentations. But isn't that hard? It's hard because I'm sitting in my home office by myself. I've got nobody to look at. There's no energy to feed from. So that's where that monotone comes in. That's where that low energy happens. And who am I smiling at? There's nobody here. So we've got to put on that right face, knowing that our virtual audience will be the ones listening to us. And so these are some of those things that we want to be monitoring. We also want to monitor our speed. I've definitely seen people who are talking too fast. And talking too fast 
looks like this visually when somebody's presenting. And I've seen people, and we could go through a lot of information if we talk really fast, and we're going to go through this whole entire webinar. We're going to talk about how to prepare and how to develop and how to deliver your presentation. We talk about how to prepare your presentation. You got to make sure that you know your purpose, where you want your audience to know, feel, and do. You want to know your audience, who are they, where they know, how much do they care. You got to make sure your timings are all lined up. Then you make sure you know the essence of your message. Then you get into the opening, you to build the structure of the message. Make sure you got a good opening. Cabo is like where it teach credibility, attention, body, audience, bring all that together. Then you have good body points. Then you have good supporting material. Then make sure you get all the visual put together. You got a good closing called MAS, M A S, memorable action summary. Then you make your storyboard, put together your good slides, plan for the Q and A. Make sure your visual, vocal, verbal are all aligned. Then you build your and then we would be done with this webinar. But that was great. We're oh, done. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Take a drink, buddy. Holy cow. I lost my breath listening to that. <laughs> we want to be aware of our pace and the cadence and making sure that we're landing enough pauses to give our audience time to process what it is that they're hearing. So these are some of those things that we do. And then one last tip, Bill, what, are, what else do we like to tell people that help with our vocals? Uh, yeah, and thank you, Kevin. And this, is, this one's a big one. And, and even if we're not virtual, this one transcends even when, you're, when we finally get out of these, uh, you know, this lockdown and we can go back to work uh, face to face. It's going to translate into that, too. Uh, think about... Uh, posture when you're sitting. And th the great thing about standing and why Kevin and I would say, let's do it even in a virtual, is because again, it affects posture. We're not crunching the diaphragm down to where, you know, we're becoming short of breath, we're not projecting well, inflection can suffer. So, you know, just stand up. And when we stand up, it does force us to be in that great posture where we can project our voice and avoid some of the pitfalls that we've just talked about. A, a real warning here though is that if you stand up, you also need to get that camera to come with you. So our picture, uh, and Kevin, I'm, I'm at home. My desk doesn't have an elevator to it where it's going to reach seven feet tall for me. So I, I you know, I've got to stay uh, kind of laying down at my desk. <laughs> so, uh, but I know for you, uh, you can stand at your desk and probably not lift the, you know, the laptop up at all. But think about standing and also group, e even on those occasions when you're, you're not turning on the video for that moment, don't be afraid to use your hands also, even though people can't see us. There is a connection between your posture and your gestures and what your voice will sound like. If you're finding yourself hitting that monotone and so forth, then stand up and help bring the energy. Get the hands in motion and it will reflect in the voice that you're using. Uh, and yes, uh, not quite, Kevin. I'm not quite seven feet tall, uh, but uh, pretty close. As I get older, I'm, I'm just sinking down into the earth. We've got to know about our video frame. We have to be aware of our voice and that we're using it appropriately because we've definitely experienced that monotone feel, that low energy feel. So we've got good video. We've got good audio. Now let's talk about a message. And I don't know what it is about virtual presentations, but it sure seems like those are more scattered than the presentations in purpose, in person, because maybe it's that face to face where people can read the audience's eyes. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that. I love this opening quote from George Bernard Shaw. He says, sorry for the letter. I didn't have time to write a postcard. Think about it. What does it mean? Sorry. He's apologizing for writing a letter because he didn't have time to write the postcard. Anybody chat window? What do you guys think that means? My interpretation, I'm curious to see if you have some thoughts on that. My interpretation, take your business, for example, and it's this. It's, I apologize that I spoke for 30 minutes, rambled quite a bit, talked in a few circles, because I didn't take the time to organize my message and really boil it down to 10 minutes. So sorry for the 30-minute meeting. I didn't have time to prepare for 10 minutes, which is what you really needed to know. A couple of ideas in there. Mike Crusoe dumped in and said, yep, it's hard to be concise. Kelly said the same thing. It's more difficult to be short and concise than it is to ramble. It takes more time to organize our thoughts. You know, people didn't take, Carla, didn't take the time to prepare. And so having that preparation, and I am going to add to this rehearsal of it, 
that when I've got what I call a critical or, you know, one of those critical conversations that we're going to have, it's my boss, my boss's boss is going to be on the call with me virtually. I'm going to grab my phone and I'm going to record the rehearsal of it so that I can go through and make sure that A, my timings are there and B, that I stay on task, task with my message. And so we want to be thinking about how we organize our message and that we're not rambling. So, Bill, what are some thoughts here on ways that make sure that we don't ramble when we present? Yeah, well, the key here is is that we've we've got to know really what our message is and the key points. And the struggle is that when we're not clear where we're trying to go with our presentation, very easy to get derailed and head down these off ramps or rabbit holes, what whatever you want to call them. And then it's just blah, blah, blah. We also need to correct the paradigm that I'm just going to talk a little about everything, because really what that means is a lot of nothing, and people will disengage. In our training, which is called Message Builder, we share some of those tools and techniques, certainly all of those tools and techniques, so that you have a crisp, clear, strong opening that gets engagement. Remember, if we don't have their attention, we can't seek comprehension or even expect any retention. So we need to get their attention. So we show you tools with that. We show you how many points can be made in a presentation and how to close it. In fact, how many points? Uh, hey, Kevin, I really have 21 things uh, I want to talk about here on Message Builder. Uh, are you good with that? Is that okay? Feels a little too much. I think uh, we could simplify that and maybe bring it down to three or less. How am I going to bring 21 points down to three? Well, Bill, I know That's you... That's always the struggle. That's always the struggle. Can... Renee is going, no way. <laughs> Go ahead, Kevin. Well, you and I could do it, but I said, why not? Let's watch a video. And part of this webcast is understanding how to use all the tools within the platform that we're using. And so we're gonna switch over to another view and Bill and I have a video clip that we would like to share with you that is talking all about the rule of three and why we should only keep three points in our presentation. So here's this video clip. It's about a minute and 20 seconds long. Here we go. Across the entire country are telling kids today in case of an emergency, dial 911. If there's a fire, stop, drop, and roll. And they're even sharing stories about three little pigs and three blind mice. Notice a commonality? All are memorable and all are built around the number three. Consider the Latin phrase, omne trium perfectum. It means everything that comes in threes is perfect or every set of three is complete. This trend, well, it actually still exists in our adulthood. Consider this, the TSA tells you to do three things. Show your ID, take out your liquids, and remove your shoes. In 2011, Steve Jobs described a new iPad as thinner, lighter, and faster. Again, the number three. The rule of three is really all around us because it works. Because here's the ultimate thing. The human brain works like this. One, two, three, I forget. Nobody, and I mean nobody, is ever going to remember your fourth or your fifth or even your tenth point. So the next time you work on your presentation, aim for this, you guessed it, the number three. Yeah, so it looks like what you're telling me here, Kevin, is I get uh, I get three topics that I can deal with, and, and you're right. So I could. I could take three and make it three, and I could take my 21 points and organize them into three lanes, or I like to look at it as three buckets, and three buckets just works, and I put items in the bucket, which would be my supporting information, uh, to get my points across. So time doesn't change the number of buckets. It's all about really the audience. The audience doesn't want 21, right? That's really crazy. But the audience will be okay with three. Because remember, it's all about when selling a house, 
Location, location, location. Three is complete. It is also the simplest of all patterns. So think three buckets. That's what I'll use. And time will determine how much I put into each bucket. Now, there's lots of titles that we can give these buckets uh, so that they make sense and it brings logical flow and keeps me, the presenter, focused. But the structure is powerful for keeping the audience engaged and to increase comprehension, which now means they'll have longer retention. Now, the other struggle we have with not only trying to get too much information, too much of a message in the time slot, is that we want to put all that information into our slide deck. And now we have slides that are a mess. Hey, jump in your chat window here as we transition to slides. What are some of the horror stories that you have seen or the struggles you've seen with PowerPoint slides or any other type of visual that's being projected? Good, Jennifer, yeah, the type's so small, nobody can read it. Yes, Peggy, you're there too. Uh, uh, yeah, Chris, like reading a novel. Yeah, yeah, Kevin, we've got some examples of that. <laughs> yeah, and then Megan is teeing us up for this next one where somebody puts every word that they're going to say on their PowerPoint slides. Now, this does eliminate the need to memorize your presentation, but it ultimately makes your slides crowded, wordy, and boring and your audience will be reading your slides and they won't be listening to you. And if you go off script, guess what? You'll really lose them. And then you'll definitely lose them before you reach the bottom of your first slide. Don't do that. We don't want poor visuals to go with our virtual presentations. Virtual presentations, it doesn't matter. If you put up a busy slide, guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna start reading it. And this comes from our visual storytelling workshop. Again. Warning, this is a plug. Our visual, visual storytelling workshop is an all day class that dives into how to create better visuals to go with a great message. So our message builder class, learn how to great, deliver a great message. The visual storytelling class, learn how to create great visuals and tell that story visually with your slides. Now, the example that I wanna ask you and we're gonna do together is this. Everybody know this guy? What's his name? Somebody go to the chat window. What's his name? He goes by different names around the globe. I was teaching a class this morning and I had majority of my team was, the class was from EMEA, from Europe. And he goes by a different name there, Wally. Everybody typed Wally into the chat window. Uh, Christopher knows him as Gary. Christopher, I'm not sure where you're going with that one. Um, but he does go by different names. How do you play the game? How do you play the game? You find him, right? You look for him. And if I brought up a busy slide like this and I'm continuing to talk, guess what your eyes are doing? Guess what you're doing? You're, you're probably focused more on the slide than you are looking at me. And that's not a bad thing. You're probably more focused on the slide than you are listening to me. And so what I'm saying isn't going to really have an impact on the rest of this presentation if the slide looks as busy as the slide that you're looking at right there. Uh, Bill found him. Bill, um, we, can, we can highlight him there. He's right there in that little circle. I promise he's there. But what's our point? Our point is that when you're creating great visuals to go with your virtual presentation, we want to make sure that we don't let the audience find it. It's not, it's not about searching for the point, but instead we give it to them, give them the point. So don't let them find Waldo. We want to give them the Waldo of the slide would be great to give them the Waldo of the entire presentation so they know what they were listening to. And then on this particular slide, they're able to clearly take that point away from what it is that we were trying to, to do. And so there's some different ways to do this. Bill, one of the things that we teach is how to simplify the slide. So let's walk them through a couple of these examples. We'll start with a busy one and then let's show them some ways to, to make it a little bit easier, a little bit clear. Uh, yeah, thank you, uh, Kevin. and. Oh, I lost my, looks like I lost my camera. <laughs> let's try that again. No. Uh, all right. So let's see if I switch to a, a, select a different camera here real quick. See if that'll work. Uh, yeah, here we go. So I'll come over here and get you on this side. 
Yeah, this is uh, always the struggle. And I like what Jason was teaching each of us in that uh, he was saying, he tells his team, cut it in 50% by 50% the text uh, at, at right after that first draft. I think that's a great, a great, a great tool. So we have this uh, all too much on this slide, right? Even though we have some nice headers and so forth and, you know, uh, topics, uh, it, there's a lot here. So let's talk about making it simpler. And, and so really what we're doing here in this uh, process is we're eliminating some of that indented text. The last thing we want our slide to be is our speaker notes. They're not designed to be your cue cards. They're there to help with clarity and for engagement, not to be your cue cards. So we can take that all that text and move it into speaker notes, hidden slides, backup slides, lots of places to put it. So look at what we've done here. This is better. Uh, it's still not as great as it possibly could be, but it is a lot better than where we began with. All right, so let's take a look at another way to do it where we use more graphic and less text. So notice here then our customer experience, and I'm going to remember the phone, the truck, the web, you know, the World Wide Web. I'm going to remember the trophies. Those images will be much more memorable than just words. In fact, we can take it even in another level. And if I show, we'll show you this next slide. And all we've done here is smart art. And this is easy to do. And how many of you have done some smart art before? I'll look into chat hinder real quick. Uh, if you've not played with smart art, you're missing out on saving yourself a tremendous amount of time. So this is easy conversion right into uh, SmartArt, right? Yes. Uh, yeah, okay, so we have this option. Look at how much cleaner, more engaging, more memorable this will be, and how much simpler it is than that first one with all the text. Now, can we make it even more simple? Uh, let's take a look at another choice of how we can do that. Now notice that we might have gone uh, to the extreme here, but the point is given. Here's the customer experience in the center of our customer, and we have phone, we have 24-7 uh, delivery, we have web solutions, we have award-winning service, and the pictures tell the story, and then I have the information. I, the presenter, I am the knowledge expert not PowerPoint, not Microsoft, it's going to be me. So now I have a slide that is assisting me and not me commentating slides or trying to explain a slide that's just crazy. Kevin, you got some more ideas possibly of what we could do to bring some uh, uh, another idea. Now, I like this one. This one's called stacking, and this is so easy to do. And I know Kevin who's a master of this, can probably create this slide in like three seconds. The one reason why I like it, especially in a virtual training situation, is that people are looking at your slides, reading them, and then typically they're disengaging and doing something else. Oh, yep, got it. And, and oftentimes when we're just using bullet points and text or even a line chart, and the next, it doesn't change much or the slides look the same, I have the same four bullet points with the same picture. The next slide has the same picture, same heading, but different bullet points. But as I look at it, it looks the same. And now I'm missing it. So here's another way to do bullet points, lots of color, big flash. Anytime the slides are changing, it will bring your audience back into your virtual presentation because they want to see what's on yeah, the these, screen. These are good. These are really good. All right, Kevin, what can we do about some? Yeah, go ahead. What can we do about bringing some focus then when I have a slide that's just a mess? Yeah, well, Bill, I was going to just pivot back to Peggy's question. She was asking, where do we learn about smart art? And I put insert smart art in the chat there. But let me let me do this even go further. And I'm going to share my screen, Peggy. And I'm going to show you how easy smart art can work with. So I pulled up the exact slide that we were looking at earlier with those three bullet points or four bullet points on it. I'm going to highlight all four of those bullets. I'm going to right click 
I'm going to go to this option right here. This is even faster. It says convert to smart art. And then I can choose one of these options down here, any one of them, whatever makes sense. I'm just going to click on a random one here with an arrow. And in, in two seconds, we've just created a very simple smart art slide. If I don't like this layout, I can go back to smart art and I can choose a different format and find one that seems to fit what we're trying to do the best. So Peggy, that's how easy smart art could be when we're using smart art. So I thought I would branch out super fast and, and show you that. So there's another feature within sharing our screen in these virtual meetings where it changes and we're able to give our audience a new perspective on something and sharing our screen might do just that. So Peggy, we got to branch off and I got to show you that as well. So we wanna have simpler slides. We wanna focus our audience. And when we focus, we wanna think about how we focus them around our slides. And there's lots of ways to do that in terms of highlighting things and ways to, to do this. I'm gonna give you one example. And then Bill, we're gonna move over and we're gonna talk about the technology, all the different things that we can do. And we've been showing some examples of it. This to the day is still one of the worst slides I've yet to see. It's very busy, crazy, with all kinds of diagram all over it, hard to really follow what it is. Using a focal point, we're going to insert a transparent yellow circle to drive the audience's focus to a particular place in the slide. That's how we can focus them. Virtually, this is very helpful because I don't get to point. When we're in person, I can gesture to a slide and point to exactly where I want you to look. Virtually, it's harder to do. And so we can use these animations to do that. So I focused you there. Doesn't last long, does it? Um, P. Lawyer said, you know, this made me disengage instantly. But now I, I drew your attention there. And then the very next slide, we dive into that topic. We dive right into those five boxes on the slide. And now our audience knows exactly where we are. And so these are some of those things that we can do visually. We've talked about simplifying the slides. We've talked about refocusing our audience. And next, we're going to talk about the technology. We want to spend the last 15, 20 minutes of the webcast talking about the technology. And we're all using so many different types of platforms. Zoom probably being the most popular. Today, we're using Adobe Connect to be able to deliver this webcast. You've got Skype, GoToMeeting. You've got WebEx. You've got the Google Hangouts or whatever Google's calling it these days. And so we've got a lot of different options. They all have some similarities. We're going to try to focus on the similarities. And then there are some differences between each of them. We're not going to be able to dissect into each platform. Different companies use different platforms. But we do want to walk you through some of the things that we do in terms of how we do this. And so, Bill, let's kind of walk them through some of these things. And we have a full day class, eight hours of just virtual presentations. And not only are we going to do a lot of what we're doing in this webcast, but we're gonna go deeper. But the best part about it is we don't have 80 people. We don't have 100 people on the session, we have 10. And you turn your video on and you deliver a virtual presentation while the rest of the class and your instructor gives you live coaching and live feedback, really powerful. So you'll know if something's not working right. You'll know if you're talking too fast or the video frame is out or the audio isn't working properly. You'll get that live coaching and that live feedback. So Bill, yeah, thank you, Kevin. And the last thing we want to do in a virtual presentation is just run a monologue or a half a log or any other kind of log, unless it's dialogue. And that, uh, that is what we enjoy. So know that all the platforms that Kevin was talking to you about there are going to have some options for you to engage. Now, the struggle is, is that we can't all engage at the same time because no one can hear anything. It's a mess. So you have some options. Know that you can uh, certainly extend microphones to your, your audience. You can also uh, set up some ground rules of how they'll engage with you, which I would say you need to set those ground rules right up front. Like we said, jump into the chat, jump into the chat. There's some other things that the, the platform can do, which are really very, very fun, like uh, using the chat window. 
and you can see that we've been doing it and uh, connecting with you, uh, talking with uh, Carla and with, uh, I mean, with, with P. Lawyer. I mean, so many of you have just been dealing with us, and it's a great way to do it and, and not get uh, too off to topic or get bogged down into it. So it's a great tool. It comes in, and it doesn't interrupt. That's the, uh, the power of the chat, and everyone can do it. Now, in some situations also, like Adobe Connect, uh, I, the presenter, can even do a private chat if there needed to be something said not to the whole group. You can actually comment very specifically to a, a single person in, in your team meeting. So, yes, uh, yeah, the chat is good. I'm with you, Carla. I love it because, again, it's, it's great. The other thing we can do is polls. And this is where we can have people agree or disagree. And all they're doing is clicking on possibly an icon. So let's practice this one real quick in Adobe Connect. In your Adobe Connect, yeah, here we go. We got a couple of polls that we have already arranged and they're easy to insert. And as you can see, Kevin's brought them up. So yeah, let's, uh, let's have you take the, the poll. Uh, what uh, would you like best uh, about today's webinars uh, so far? And uh, you can even do a, what's one of the big takeaways? Let's have you have some fun with that. Let's see where we're at. Uh, yeah, Bill is tall. <laughs> uh, we should have put in there, Kevin Short. Maybe I'll just do that, yes. <laughs> uh, you know, Kevin. So right now, they don't see all the options, and so we're going to broadcast the results. I see them slowing down. We wanted to show them, Bill, two different ways to do a poll, one where they're just choosing an example. So let me broadcast those results to everybody so everybody can see the percentage. So the largest percentage said the, the rule of three was very impactful, and the slide examples were impactful. Those were probably the two biggest things there. Um, Bill, you and I modeling these techniques um, got the lowest score, so I guess we need to do a better job of that. And then on the other side, now let's broadcast those. We had 23 people out of our 100 that went in and actually typed something. And, and so we're getting to see some of those there as to what people type. So everything from the rule of three to well, a lot of rule of threes there to, uh, to one of them, my favorite there, that says Bill is tall. Um, I'm not seeing anything that says anything about Kevin being funny. I, I really would have thought that me switching um, outfits and going to my T-shirt and hat would have gotten a better laugh and would have thought that would have been a little more memorable than it was here in, in this particular presentation. So different ways that, uh, that we can use these tools. So using the poll feature is gonna be one of them. Um, we, we've talked about the chat window already, so we, we have the poll feature. You can also do reactions. And again, every one of the tools is a little bit different. And, and I say a little bit different because how you do a reaction in Zoom, which is the one on the left there, you can have people do a thumbs up, thumbs down. They can say, I'm going to get coffee. They can say, yes, no, go slower, go faster. So that's Zoom. The one on the right is here in Adobe. Up on the top of the menu, there's a little picture of a man with his hand up. And you can drop that down. And you can have your entire audience choose agree. Instead of having everybody type yes or no in the chat window, the agree option could be an easy visual way for you to see if everybody understood what was happening or if they have any questions. They can even raise their hand. This is how we avoid people talking over each other, is that if you've got 10, 20, 30, maybe even 100 participants, you have people raise their hand, you'll see it, and you'll be able to call on them, turn their microphone on, and then leave it muted after that. And so there's some ways to get the audience engaged there as well. So we've got ways to react. I showed you earlier how to share your screen, which is why I wanted to go off and share my screen and show you how to use the smart art feature that Peggy was asking about a little bit earlier. And Bill, we, we talk about questions a lot, and, and this is how you engage. People tend to, tend to feel that it's, it's a one-way street, and that we have to do all the talking, but we don't. We can have two presenters, we'll talk more about that in a minute, and we can also ask the group a lot of different questions, and we can have them respond by raising their hand, we can have them respond by going to the chat, or we can have them respond with polls. But what are some other things to watch out for? Yeah, and here's where we can really make some, some mistakes. And we want to make sure that the questions are safe, relevant, 
And we're, not, we're never trying to use the gotcha questions, right? Uh, the other thing I have found to be very beneficial here, Kevin, is, is that before I ask a, a, a member of the team on the presentation with me a question, I want to say their name. Uh, in other words, I'm not going to, you know, hey, can you calculate out what next quarter will be with X, Y, Z factored in? Kevin, can you respond to that? Uh, if I go that route, Kevin, remember, is more than likely taking copious notes on what he heard me say previous because it's always so profound. And then he's missing the question. All he's hearing is his name, which gets him engaged. And now he's like, uh, what? And now you have to back up, reset it again. So the key here is say their name, call them out, give a slight pause so they engage with us, and then extend the question. And in this case, we are setting them up for success and not failure and keeping them engaged. So using names is absolutely paramount for the success of really engaging your audience and getting them into a dialogue with you. Uh, and you've got it. I mean, the attendees are there. And at times when, you know, sometimes those things kind of aren't there when I'm sharing my screen in, you know, Skype business, uh, I'm going to have a list of people right here in front of me, a, a hard copy, so I know who I'm talking to. And in fact, names are so important for me that even when I'm on the phone with a help desk and they give me their name, I'm going to write it down so that I will use it going forward. It's a huge engagement tool. No, that's great. Uh, Bill, I'm looking back at the chat now. Megan, talking about using names, and Carla were saying that they've used whiteboards in the past, and they've seen that. And so, Bill, can you do a demonstration for us? I brought up the whiteboard here in Adobe. Where have you used the whiteboard? Because this could be another way that we engage the audience. And, and again, it's different when we make these changes. And, and that's why I've changed the layout a few times. That's why we've changed and, and we've shown videos and we've done polls and shown our videos. Sometimes we turn our video off. That doing all of this are changes that keep our audience's attention. So how have you used the poll? I'm sorry, the, the whiteboard feature. Yeah, I would use the whiteboard sometimes just to talk through a concept. For example, group, jump in your chat real quick and tell me, uh, how long do you think uh, attention span is for your audience uh, and when you're presenting? What's the average attention span? What would you say? Yeah, Chris, about seven, three, seven, two to three seconds. <laughs> You've been listening to me talk. I've already lost you. Yeah, so we can... We can play with this and share with you some research, and this from the Journal of Chemical Education. So what we can do is uh, we can describe what I usually do. I describe what they did, giving everybody a remote. They get to click in where their level of engagement is throughout a presentation. So we then take all that data and we chart it. So I get my X and Y axis going here, and it doesn't have to be a accurate. I'm just wanting to get a point across. So over here, we're going to have, uh, this is attention, and down here, I'm going to have time. All right, so real quick, group, in your chat, at the very beginning of your presentation, where is the audience's attention? You think it's high or low? What would you say? Right at the very, very beginning. Yeah, you're right, group. It's going to be high, so I'm going to put it up here. Let's go to this point, which is 30 seconds in. That's 30 seconds. What's happened in the first 30 seconds? Do you think it's gone up or do you think it's gone down? Okay, good. Depends on engagement. Most of you are saying down, yes. And this is what they found is that it actually does a major dive. Uh, it's going to come right back up again and it's going to dive one more time and then finally just uh, crash. Uh, now, so 30 seconds in, we've lost the audience. We see another big dip at five minutes, and then again at nine. So here is a way, Kevin, that I would use a whiteboard to bring engagement and help me tell the story.
Yeah, I was just typing in the chat window that I, I wrote draining. I would need drawing lessons. That was supposed to be drawing. I would need drawing lessons before I could get good at that. Um, you definitely did a better job than I think I could have done trying to do that myself. And so that's one of the things that we want to be thinking about, all these different ways that we can use the features to keep people engaged, that it's not just about talking and it's not just about sharing slides. Now, we want to do those things as well. We talked about raising hands, getting people to participate in the auditory. Now, we've got 100 people on. I'm not about to start raising hands and, and calling on people. Then you run into some microphone issues. So when, when, I'm, when I am presenting, I like to do all of that. I have people log in five to 10 minutes early so we can do all the testing before the meeting starts. And so that when we're calling on somebody, we're not having those technology delays in the middle there. So we talk about engaging with the chat. There's also break room, breakout features. We could do a breakout where in a meeting, we could have people break out. Zoom has this feature, Adobe Connect has this feature where you could break the group out into, just like you would in a classroom, into a pod. At this table, I want you guys to have a, a discussion. This table, I want you to have a discussion. We can now do breakouts to do that. Break the group out into, just like you would in a classroom, into a pod. At this table, I want you guys to have a, a discussion. This table, I want you to have a discussion. We can now do breakouts to do that. So there's lots of options. Again, we, we're hoping that Bill and I have modeled some of this for you. We played a video earlier. Changes the scenery, we got to go watch and play a video. And so those are some of those things that we do. And then those last one are changing those layouts. You've noticed that we've done that a couple of times throughout this session. And then we get into some of our final thoughts. And, and Bill, as we wrap up, I'm, I'm gonna give us our final thoughts and then I want you to give your final thoughts. For me, it's about being authentic. It's hard to be yourself. You're in your room by yourself. And so how do you let some of your personality come out and, and, let, and let it come out and be okay with the fact? I really loved the NFL draft that was on a couple of weeks ago when we got to see into the coaches and see into the uh, general manager's living rooms and they had their kids with them. This is people being authentic. So think about your authenticity. Think about having fun. There's nothing wrong with incorporating some of that. Bill and I tried to do that. And I, I say tried. I had my, my, my I speak hat on a little bit earlier. Um, with my t-shirt, have some fun with it. And when it works, have multiple presenters. Those multiple presenters can break up the presentation, give your audience an opportunity to hear from different people, create a different voice, and it makes it easier for them to wanna pay attention. I hope this made it easier for you to be able to listen to me and Bill. So as we're closing, we've got about a minute left. I wanna say thanks. And I want to let you know what's next. We've got a lot of things that are next. And that is you, number one, might have some people at your organization or maybe some friends that might want to take this exact webcast. We've got two more coming up next week. The next one is May the 20th at 2 p.m. Central Time. Sign up for it and have some folks come and, and get some of these same tips and tricks. That next week, it'll be Bill and David. And then on the 21st, and you can go to our Eventbrite website, and you will have Russ and Todd. And so you'll get some different voices, maybe attend all three and, and learn some different things from everybody. If you liked any of what you heard, we talked about the Message Builder Workshop, the workshop, the Virtual Presentation Workshop, the Visual Storytelling Workshop. Reach out to our account manager, Dara Kukla. She's awesome. I've known her for tw over 20 years and you will love working with Dara. And so Bill, We've got so many things that we could do for us. We want them to connect with us. And, and so wrap us up. Say goodbye. I want to say thanks, everybody. We really, really appreciate you guys being here. Bill, what are your parting thoughts for everybody? Uh, thank you, Kevin. And it has been an absolute joy to be with you today and share our thoughts. Thanks for your thoughts in here. I know we're all getting kind of, you know, just trouble being at home and being stuck there. Uh, this can be a moment where we can really shine uh, even though we're all uh, in a stay-at-home situation. It's great to have the kids and certainly uh, to be connecting with the family. Thank you, group, and good luck in all of your virtual trainings, presentations, and communications. May you all have wonderful luck. Thank you.